Hi, this is Morley and this is The Wire. In this video, we're going to look at how the left is threatening to burn down the country if Trump and the GOP try to replace Ginsburg in SCOTUS. Thank you to my new subscribers. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. It would greatly help out the channel. So, how is this any different than what's already happening? The Dems are already burning down the country and this has nothing to do with Ginsburg or SCOTUS. We've seen riots now in places like Portland go on for months. Uh, the rioting and the looting continues, folks. There's, it, there's nothing new under the sun there. It's obvious that the left's way of dealing with things is to throw a tantrum when things don't go their way. They seem like little kids when, the, when being told they can't have an ice cream. That's par for the course for them. I don't think the, the Democrats know that it's the president's prerogative as to whether or not he wants to appoint someone. Uh, not uh, a former SCOTUS member like Ginsburg, who requested, apparently requested, that she not be replaced until the, after the election. Um, the Constitution says that the president can do this, so to the left, nerds to you. That's all I have to say. Just once, I would like to see the left have a, a logical response to something as opposed to an emotional one. I, I mean, this is this is their M.O. Everything is feelings with the left, as we as we are painfully aware. Speaking of which, Nancy Pelosi is threatening impeachment yet even again. Ooh, yawn. Big deal, Nancy. But hey, it's a case in point. So thanks for that, Nancy. This just screams desperation. I mean, it really does. I, I mean, the Dems are just beside themselves, not even knowing how to deal with the fact that Trump gets to nominate uh, a third SCOTUS in four years. They, they, they're, they're still mentally processing that. They know that Trump's SCOTUS pick will definitely have bearing in the election, and they're obviously worried as they well should be. I mean, look at their candidate. I've been listening to a lot of political talk shows lately, actually, and a lot of dyed-in-the-wool Democrats are saying they're voting Republican this year, and that's largely due to the violence that they've seen in these dem Democrat-run cities and states, and who can blame them for that? I mean, they're so they're now threatening to burn down the country if Ginsburg is replaced on Donald Trump's watch. Well, lefties, all I have to say is... Get your matches, because it's probably going to happen later this week. Let's get into this thing. Leftists explode following Ginsburg's death, threaten to burn down country and leave bodies in the street if Trump and GOP try to replace her. Proving once again why the Democratic Party, home to the American left, should never ever be given the reins of power again because of their Stalinist and Leninist blue checks on Twitter, Threaten to burn up the country and leave bodies in the streets, literally. If President Trump and the Republican Senate name a successor to Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg following her Friday death from pancreatic cancer. If they even try to replace RBG, we'll burn the entire effing thing down, Riza Aslan, an Iranian-American and former CNN contributor who claims to be a religious scholar, tweeted. Okay. He would later tweet in response to a statement from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who vowed to give any nominee made by Trump a vote over our dead bodies, literally. Writer Bo Willman added, We're shutting this country down if Trump and McConnell try to ram through an appoint appointment before the election. GQ reporter Laura Bassett wrote, If McConnell jams th someone through, which he will, there will be riots. She will follow that up with more bigger riots, but she just deleted it. <laughs> Meanwhile, a professor at the University of Waterloo tweeted, Burn Congress down before letting Trump try to appoint anyone to SCOTUS. He then protected his account on Twitter because in reality, obviously, he's a coward. Now granted, for the most part, it would be easy to wave off the threats made by these lunatic threats as hyperbole. Were it not for the fact that our country has just endured months of rioting, looting, and statue toppling violence, ostensibly in the name of career criminals in Minneapolis who may have died a wrongful death, but who certainly does not deserve sainthood. 
as we might be able to dismiss them as if they weren't already aware of a sinister plot in the Stalinist Democrat left to try and steal the election in November with waves of fake mail-in ballots and endless lawsuits, many of which would ultimately wind up before the Supreme Court, making that number one reason why the president and the Senate GOP have put its successor on the high court. So the threats have to be taken seriously if the whiny, butthurt leftist Twitter warriors are making them from the safety of their homes and basements aren't actually going to be the heroes lining the streets ready for battle. Because as we've seen all summer long, there are hidden forces behind the current violent protests, organizing them, funding them, and reportedly transporting them. There is no doubt then that in the same revolutionary forces will exploit as the president's next Supreme Court nomination, to launch with all kinds of new violence. The only good news is that the writing will no longer be about alleged police systemic racism or Black Lives Matter. See how quickly the revolutionary left pivots from one issue to another, always plotting, always exploiting, always lying in wait for the next opportunity to tear the country apart? What the president does in response to all these threats is all important. He can't really take them with a grain of salt, Not that he has thus far. He's been calling for law and order literally since the George Floyd incident. And in some cases, he's managed to achieve it. Part of his response plan to be the mobilization of willing souls on the local level who are not afraid to put their country and their communities and their families first. Above politics in order to save the greatest nation on earth from self-assured destruction that a second civil war would create. We cannot tolerate the perpetually angry left attacking the civil society every time they don't get their way. That said, 2020 cannot be over quick enough. Well, exactly. I I mean, I've already said that no matter who wins the election, there's going to be... It's not going to go down smoothly. This is a foregone conclusion. As to uh, how much of an insurrection we're actually going to see, that remains to be seen. But uh, thank you so much for coming along to my video. If you haven't already, please subscribe, please comment, please share. It would greatly help out the channel, and God bless.